Oh, hi there. I'm Karim from Super Tan Bikes Co. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Karim from Super Tan Bikes Co. If you're watching this video, you probably just bought a tube from us and I'd like to say thank you. This video will be on all the questions that you guys have asked in regards to tube check. And today I have a old bike I've found in the backyard with a, you've guessed it, flat tube in the back. So bear with me and I'll do my best to try and explain everything. If you're watching this video, you've probably recently bought a tube from us. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you guys! Step one, equipment you'll need. Number one is obviously a standard bike pump. If you don't have one, it is pretty hard to replace a flat tire tube without a pump. So I'd recommend buying one. Equipment number two is obviously a bike tube. If you don't know what tube you need to buy, I'd recommend checking out my other video. On, it gives a full in-depth explanation of what tube you need, how to read tire sizes, and all the other bike tube shenanigans. Another equipment you might require is a 15 millimeter spanner and that would depend on the type of axle your bike has. This one has a plastic bolt and that's what you'll use the spanner on. So 15 millimeter, so it's nice and perfect. If you don't have this, you most likely have a quick release axle and you don't even need a spanner. You can undo that with a hand and it should be pretty simple. If you need to know how to open that, shoot me a message and I'll make a video just for you. Some other equipment to make the process a bit more easier is a pair of tire levers. I'll explain what these do when we take the tire out. Another thing is gloves. If you don't want your hands as dirty as mine, I'd recommend using gloves. Step two, how to take your wheel out of your tire. For today, I'll be using a bike stand. If you don't have a bike stand, you can always put it on the ground like this. Make sure that the bike is stable and it has no means of tipping. Before removing the back wheel, we need to have a few things just to prepare for the wheel to come off. One is you have to make sure the chain is sitting on the smallest gear, that is the gear closest to you. We don't want it sitting up at the highest because if it's up there, the chain will get stuck and you'll have a few problems. Number two is feet brakes if you have disc brakes you don't need to do this the tire will the wheel will slide straight off but with feet brakes you'll need to open up the brakes how we do that is we squeeze both ends so squeeze both ends and we push this pin down or lift the noodle so this is noodle we push and lift the noodle up so the noodle is nice and loose and open the brakes are released now it's time to dismount the wheel. How we do that with the standard bolt axles is we bring out our 15mm spanner, as I said in the preparation stage, and we start unscrewing the nut leftways. If you have the quick release skewer, all you need to do is lift the quick release and unscrew the skewer. So we start off by putting the 15mm spanner in, left to Lucy, so we start <clears throat> unscrewing it leftways. If you're having trouble taking that out, go find some WD-40 and just spray it down. Not too much that it gets messy. So we unscrew this side, enough for our fingers to unscrew it. And then we go to the other side, make sure it's going left ways. That means when you face it, it's going left ways. Once both sides are finger tight, get ready to pull the tire out. Because you're probably doing this with the bike upside down, the tire won't slip out, so that's fine. You unscrew both nuts so that it is out or just enough for it to come out on both ends. And then the wheel should slide right off when you give it a small bump. This stage is, is pretty important on how we remove it is if your chain starting to get stuck, pull the derailleur, which is the thing that moves the chain. Pull the derailleur down. That gives you lots of room underneath for your cassettes and wheel to have room to come out. And that is removing your wheel from the bike. Hey, now that you've gotten your wheel out of your bike, uh, just keep track of all the parts and pieces that have come off. Mainly the bolt that, or the nut 
that you've unscrewed and make sure they're still on. And now for the tube removal. Make sure the tube is completely deflated. How we do that is there's a small pin in your tube valve. You push it with say a twig or a screwdriver so that all the air comes out. Yep. Once your flat's completely deflated, that'll make your life a whole lot easier. I'll be doing this demonstration without the tie levers, as I've said, just so everyone has a chance of changing the tube. Okay, without tie levers. First, you'll squeeze the whole tire on top and have a good grip on the rim. You want to hold it so that the valve the valve is completely opposite away from where you're gripping. Squeeze both sides and lift and push. So you want to lift the tire up just enough so that it has room to come out of the rim. Push it out and the whole tire should come out. Hey, now that you have your tire and tube out, remove the tube from the tire, which should just come straight out. If your tube didn't come out with your tire, that's all right. Just remove the tube from your rim. Now with the tire, it's important that you check for any thorns that could have possibly gone through. How I normally do that is I just give it a quick look around and around, making sure there's nothing, no thorns sticking out all the way around in a full circle. Make sure you take your time, and even if you do two laps around the whole tire, that's fine. Make sure there's no thorns or any prickly staples, say pins, glass, shards, sticking out. If you have a hole through your tire just like that, I don't know if you can see it, probably can, I'd recommend getting a whole new tire just so you avoid another tube pop. Hey, once you've cleared your tire from any thorns or sharp bits, it is time to install the tube. Now that you've taken all the thorns and prickles out of your tire, it's time to put your brand new tube in. So go ahead and open up your brand new tube from your tube box, pop it out and get ready. Take the cap off obviously and keep note where you place that because you don't want to lose that. We want to pump the new tube just enough so that it fits inside the rim when we place the tire in. So what I mean by that is we probably want to pump it just enough so that there's air in it, not pump it so much that it's nice and round. We don't want it round just yet. We just want it to have some air in it. So we go ahead and pump and pump. So just enough air so that it is kind of taking shape, but not quite. If you think there's too much air in it, just go ahead and deflate it a bit so that it's still airy, but not too airy that it can't fold. So we grab our rim and place our tire on. First, we make sure that the tire is in the right place. What I mean by that is when your wheel is spinning, some tires have certain directions that it should be installed on. So if the wheel's spinning this way, we read the tire wherever the arrow says direction that way. For example, this tire has a direction mark where it says drive with an arrow pointing that way. So that means when the tire spins, it goes that way. We want to make sure we align it nice and straight, going both the same direction. We want to place half a tire in, so by half I mean align the rim on one half of the tire bead, which is that, and we place half in. So if you see here, only half of the rim is in. Once the first bit of the first half is in, we start tucking in the rest of the half. 
which is pulling the tire on. It might be tricky at first, but you'll get there. Right. Now that half the tire is in, it's time for the tube to come in. We grab our tube that is half inflated, and we start off by putting the valve end in first. Note that when putting the tube in, we want to make sure that there are no folds when placing it in. That means when we put the tube in, that bits of the tube are folded. We want to make sure it's nice and smooth all the way around. Find the valve hole. We tuck the whole tire in, well, a bit of the tire in. Place the valve inside the valve hole. If you think that there's no room for the valve to go in, that's most likely your rim tape, which is that black thing. We'll so just go ahead and slide the rim tape so that the hole is nice and center. So we'll place the valve in the valve hole. And here's the trigger bit. We wanna still have half in and half out. So this half of the tire, we'll quickly put it back out whereas the other half is still in. So half in. Once that's done, should be easy riding and just go ahead and tuck your tube in. All the way around, making sure it's nice and straight. Okay, when we tuck it in, we tuck it in so that it sits inside or as far inside the rim as possible, not tucking it in that it's hanging out. Because if we do that and try and tuck the tire in, it'll obviously leave the tube out, if you can see there. Whereas if we tuck it in properly inside the rim, when we tuck our tire in, the tube won't stick out. Once the tube is tucked in nice and neatly, we go ahead and start tucking the whole tire in. How we do this is we start at the valve end, we squeeze so that the tire starts to go inside the rim, and we start squeezing both ends simultaneously at the same time, having good coordination all the way in. Make sure that when you're tucking it in, the other half on the other end doesn't slide out. So what I mean, what I mean by that is sometimes when you tuck in, you over tuck it, and you think you're going good, but on the other end, the tire is sitting out. We don't want that. We want that to stay in. So you go ahead and tuck, tuck, tuck. And when our hands are close to meet, this is where it starts getting tricky and tight. But for this, it is nice and smooth. It'll tuck in. On some bikes you'll have, or on bikes with new tires, it'll be so tight that you'll actually need a tire lever and that's where you tuck the tire lever in and just slide up and it should slide in that's how the tire lever works hey all right now that you have your tire in we won't pump it just yet we'll get ready and put it back on our bike now it's time to slide your wheel back onto your bike frame and how we do that is by just Sliding in, making sure that we tuck the chain in between the cassettes so that it sits on the smallest gear where we left it, where we took it off. If you're struggling, remember you can always pull down the derailleur and give yourself that extra room. We then, once the chain sits on the lowest gear, get ready to start sliding it in. Make sure your runway is clear and that your axle has plenty of room to go into where it will be sitting. We slide that in like so and we start screwing it in with our hand for the meantime. Once we screw the right and left side in it is time to whip out our 15 millimeter spanner. If you have the quick release remember all you need to do is screw in the quick release skewer and tighten it just hand tight so that it's enough that the wheel won't be too loose. So we go ahead and grab our 15 millimeter spinner and start tightening it. Now a key note to when 
and how you tighten it is that when we tighten it, we want to make sure the wheel is perfectly straight compared to the frame. How we find this is if we look at our tire, we want to make sure that it's perfectly in center with our frame. So middle of the tire sits perfectly so that it aligns with the middle of our frame. Another way to check is with our tire having enough space on the right side over here so that it doesn't touch the frame. Same space on the left side so the tire doesn't touch the frame. Another key note when tightening your nut is just remembering that it's all the way sitting back on the frame. So make sure when we tighten, that's me loosening it, we're not tightening it so that there's a gap where there's room for the axle to come up. Do want to make sure it's fully tucked in. And that can be confusing because on the other side, if you look, it's not meant to be sitting all the way back on the frame. This is so that you have room for adjustment on aligning the wheel. Because if we sit it all the way back and try and tighten it all the way back, if you look at the wheel alignment, the tire here will be rubbing on the frame. And whereas if it's all the way out, the wheel would be rubbing on the other side and you'd have too much space on here. So we want to just lift it enough so that our wheel is perfectly aligned, as I said before. Tire, center of tire to center of frame. So we want to go ahead and lift it just enough so that it's halfway on each end and hand tighten it. Hand tighten, hand tighten. Both sides. Hey. Now that you've hand tightened both sides of the nuts to the best you can, it's time to bring out our 15 millimeter spanner and start tightening it. Make sure we tighten it evenly. So that means we'll tighten a bit on this side and we'll go ahead and tighten a bit on this side. Tighten righty tighty. That means we're gonna spin it clockwise this time, going right ways, so right. A bit on this side, and a bit on this side. Hey, One way to tighten it is get good mechanical leverage, which means that we want to sit our spanner at a certain point so that we have a good grip of the spanner and the bike frame. That way we can just put our hands together and just squeeze one hand or even two hands so that it helps us tighten the nut. That goes the same way on the other side. We want to good, have a good mechanical leverage, so that all we need to do is squeeze and it'll tighten. If you can't tighten anymore, that means your tire is now back on the frame. Now that your wheel is back onto the frame, you're one step closer onto riding your bike. Next step is the V-brakes. With the disc brakes, remember, you don't need to do these because obviously you don't even have these brakes. But with the free brakes, we want to put our noodle back onto place. And how we do that is pretty much exactly the same how we took it off. We're going to squeeze both ends. We're going to make sure that the noodle hook is right on the noodle like so. Once that goes in, release. And the noodle should sit nice and firmly, or I don't know, nice and just nice. And that should be it. Now that your noodle is sitting nice on the V brakes, it is usual because we've been fiddling with the V brakes so much that your brakes become unaligned, I'd say. And that would require some brake adjustments. How we do that is for another video. So go ahead and check out my other videos. For now, we will resume our tubes. Just before we get into pumping our tube, we want to make sure that the valve sits nice and straight and I'd say parallel to your spokes. Because when you install your tube, sometimes it'll sit awkwardly, just like that, unparallel or the other way around. On lovely occasions, you will be able to do it just like what I'm doing. 
and other times it'll be really hard and you'll struggle a fair bit. How I cope with that is if it sits on one side a bit too much, go ahead and spin your wheel forward and slam the brakes. Once the brakes slam, the tire would slide naturally to the other side. If you have it going this way, spin your wheel backwards and slam your brakes and the tire will continue to go there, making it slide that way. So spin your bike wheel and hold that back brake lever so that your tire goes either that way or that way. Hey, now that our tube valve is perfectly aligned with our spokes, nice and straight, it is now time to pump it. When we pump it, we have to make sure that we put enough air in as what is recommended on our tire. Most tires, to nearly all tires, will say how much pressure we put in, and usually what we go for here is the PSI, which is pound force per square inch. It's pretty much an indicator of how much air we put in. If you don't have a gauge on your pump, which is this, just pump it enough that it feels nice and hard to the hands. If you pump it too much, you will burst the tube and you'll have to repeat all the steps again, which is what we don't want. So go ahead and pump your tire, clip your pump on. Remember, if you don't have a pump, I'd recommend getting one because you do have a bike and it will definitely go flat over time. We go ahead and pump. And once that's done, we take our pump off and we put in our valve cap. Screw that in and voila, congratulations. You have now completed a tube replacement on your tire. Well done. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. If you want me to make any other videos, leave a comment down there. Feel free to message me on all my socials. Other than that, have fun riding. Bye.